Hey, what's going on, people? And welcome to the first upload of 2022. Today we'll be counting down the top 10 most secretly powerful weapons in Borderlands 3. These guns are a hidden meta all in themselves, capable of dealing some incredible damage. Whether you've been using them wrong or haven't paired them with the right gear, these weapons have always been capable of causing some serious mayhem, and today we unlock their secrets. I'll be letting you know where you can get each gun, explain what it does, and how you can transform them into killing machines. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what your favourite secretly powerful weapon is and if there's any more you know of that are just waiting to be uncovered. If you enjoyed the video I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, or follow me on Twitter and let's crack into it. In no particular order, we open this countdown of the top 10 secretly powerful weapons in Borderlands 3 with the Phaser, an elemental bladder for assault rifle that has an increased chance to drop from Atomic, but you fight around here in the Tazendir ruins. You might be thinking, what? The Phaser's trash? Well, Mr. Spock it is, but have you tried setting Phasers to kill? Its alternate firing mode is unreal, firing 8 elemental orbs per shot that deal over 400,000 vanilla damage, and not just regular damage, but splash damage. It's like a boomsickle, but easier to get, and I like it better. The underbarrel shotgun comes ready loaded with 6 rounds, and it will regenerate ammo over time. With mag boost, you can get that sitting comfortably over 10, and if you play your cards right, you can turn this secondary mode into a primary one where you'll never set your phases to stun again. On modes, that comes easy, with its splash damage refilling its magazine whenever you fire. You'll power through hordes of enemies in no time, boldly going where no modes has gone before, and its multiple pellets allow it to down bosses in a flash. Zane can use the Digiclone regen ammo anointment to blast through mobs without a thought of running dry, Amara can use Dread to turn phase locked enemies into a fresh magazine, and Flak, with the help of Leave No Trace, can have it lasting way longer than it should. If you're looking for a fantastic splash damage shotgun, then forget looking for it in the shotgun department, it's hidden away on the underbarrel of the phaser. Moving on now to the Ripper, a dull SMG that can come in all of the elements. With an increased chance to drop from Shiv, you fight around here in Covenant Pass. The Ripper is a good gun at the worst of times, but amazing at the best of times. It holds within it a soul that can never be sated, signified by the bloodied blade beneath its barrel. Stabbing enemies with the Ripper will cause them to bleed, charging the soul it's bound to and causing them to take twice the normal amount of damage. They'll bleed for 5 seconds, which is plenty of time to tear through that health bar. A normal gameplay loop would consist of stabbing and waiting for the stab animation to end before riddling your target with bullets, but you can avoid all that by combining it with a fish slap grenade mod and a stinger shield. Both those items deal melee damage and will apply the ripper's effect to enemies while it's in your hands. That speeds up the gameplay loop immensely, allowing you to blitz through targets before they even know what hit them. It is one of the best 3 piece builds you can muster, and results in a deadly weapon that won't think twice before laying enemies to bed. No matter who you're up against, the Ripper will rip them a new one, even if they have one already. Up next, it's the Saw Bar, a COV assault rifle that only comes in fire and has an increased chance to drop from Borman Nates. You fight around here in the Meridian outskirts. The Saw Bar isn't a gun that you can simply start shooting and expect some heavy damage. You have to play towards its unique effect, and if you do, you'll be greatly rewarded. It deals its best damage from a distance, roughly 20 meters or 65.6168 feet. It's at that point where it's bullet fragments into three before exploding into a wall of flames. On a splash damage mode, that explosion is fierce, engulfing all nearby enemies in a fiery explosion. You'll struggle to find a more powerful splash damage assault rifle, and it can take to crowds like very few guns can. 
Its unique projectile pattern also helps it to one-shot bosses on an eraser Zane. You don't even need a Hustler class mod. Just tap that trigger once and watch as the health bar disappears. It's best when paired with an Infernal Wish, at least if you're Moe's. And if you can overcome its unique effect, there's a lot to love about this gun for every Vault Hunter. Now for the Hive, a Torg rocket launcher that can only come in radiation and corrosive, and can only drop from Princess Tarantella II who you find around here in the Splinterlands. The Hive isn't just an extremely fun weapon to use, but a powerful one too, and although that may not be a secret, this gun can take on literally everything in the game without you needing any skill at all. You could be an overweight chipmunk wearing diapers and you could still drop bosses with this gun if that chipmunk knows what the fire button is and how to press it. It fires robotic hives that fly for a few seconds before rising into the air and unleashing mini homing rockets that devastate the area. Each hive houses at least 13 rockets which swarm the area and provide an incredibly long window of damage. The Infernal Wish boosts its rocket count to 26, and Flack and Zane can even get it sitting at 39, with Toothang and Playing Dirty respectively. Spamming hives almost blackens the sky as the kamikaze wasps fly out and clear the battlefield all by themselves. It's a gun that does the dirty work for you, and it's great on the clone. Up next we have the Shocker, an unshockingly shock only shotgun that belongs to the Guns Love and Tentacles DLC with an increased chance to drop from Boltborn when you fight around here in the Golden Shy. The Shocker fires a single sparkling orb that morphs into two more after travelling a short distance. That interestingly enough makes it a shotgun that's better from far away and it really can dish out some hurt. Its orbs form a wall as they move down range and will flatten opponents easily, especially on Moe's when combined with an Infernal Wish which will expand its wall of damage. You're not Moe's parting the sea, you're Moe's parting enemies. On Amara this gun reacts viciously with indiscriminate and ties that bind, sending orbs flying out at enemies which cause some hefty collateral damage. While mobbing it's relentless, especially when you charge a part of it with infusion and give it another element to work with. It's not all that great while bossing though, well unless you're Zane. Combine Eraser with the Hustler class mod and you can turn those three projectiles into a lot more than three, I still haven't counted yet. In that combination its orbs will penetrate targets and grow stronger as they do so, culminating in mountains of damage whenever they explode. It epitomizes the phrase, never judge an item by its weapon card, performing a lot better the more you get used to it. Moving on to the Sleeping Giant, to dial SMG that can only come in Corrosive, Shock, Incendiary and Non-Elemental with an increased chance to drop from One Punch around here in the underground of Lectra City. To get One Punch to appear, you'll need to solve the code. You'll notice 5 switches that you can interact with, and pressing them in the right combination will open the door to where he spawns. Interacting with the lever twice and then turning the wheel is the quickest combination. The Sleeping Giant lives up to its name by being one of the most powerful weapons in the game, but that power is often taking a nap, and it's hard to know when it awakes. I say that because like the Lucky 7, the Sleeping Giant is gifted bonuses whenever you reload, but you never know what they are until you start shooting. They're applied a couple of seconds after sliding in the next mag and can include hefty damage increases, a reload speed boost, a fire rate boost, as well as improved handling or accuracy. The damage buffs can be applied multiple times and when they all stack up, will net you close to 5.5 times more damage. That's an incredible amount of firepower which you can hold on to. To supercharge its magazine I like to test out on the dummy before I go hunting and when I'm out on the hunt, this giant is sleeping no more, crushing the competition. It fires incredibly quickly and deals great damage. To keep that up 24-7 you can use Dread on Amara 
a Digicone ammo regen anointment on Zane, redistribution or short fuse on Moe's, and for Flak you'll probably need the help of Terra Anoints, but that doesn't stop them from storming through bosses. Using it traditionally without holding on to that supercharged magazine will still have it performing well, but just know there's a lot of damage potential lying in wait. Next up, it's first name Gordon, last name Freeman, a non-elemental Atlas rocket launcher that can only be dropped by the Warden. You fight around here in the Anvil. The Freeman is a launcher unlike any other. It fires at a good pace, only consumes one ammo per shot, and has one of the coolest unique effects in the entire game. The rockets it fires are laser guided and will follow your crosshairs until they hit something or detonate after a short period. With it you can guide its rockets into those critical points causing some heavy damage and no matter how much your enemies duck and roll, all you need to do is place that crosshair back on them once again to see them explode into a blood cloud. Its effect combines perfectly with the overkill guardian rank and its high fire rate is always there to tap into if you want to raise its DPS. You can even abuse its unique effect if you're Zane and you're specced into a racer. Any rocket that penetrates a crit will continue to be guided by your crosshairs, allowing you to circle it back into your target where it explodes inside them, causing some mammoth damage. Doing that never gets old, and you'll never grow tired of this weapon. Time now for the SF4, it's a musical melee wand laser weapon that has an increased chance to drop from DJ Spin's mouth who you fight around here in Skidmore Basin as part of the Guns, Love and Tentacles DLC. The SF4 is actually an incredible gun, firing a red hot elemental laser that penetrates enemies. It must have been a recorder in a past life because it also fires musical notes which deals splash damage on impact. There is one key thing you need to know about this gun, and that is its primary mode is a gazillion times more powerful than the other. That does limit it to a single element, but that's fine when you see the amount of damage it deals. It's extremely accurate and deadly, your typical laser able to dominate the mobbing field and drain those big health bars in no time. You can even get a binary variant which consumes twice the ammo, but since there's no projectiles, the standard variant is definitely best. Its railgun capabilities make it great while mobbing, and it doesn't let up against bosses either. Wherever you go and whoever you play on, the SF Force has more than you need to get the job done. Now for the Devil's Force Arm, a Torg pistol that comes in every single element and has an increased chance to drop from the Psycho Billies around here in the Ambermire. The Devil's Force Arm is more of a threat to you than your enemies most of the time, but that doesn't stop it from detonating megatons worth of explosives. It fires 3 projectiles per shot that arc into the center of your crosshairs where they detonate over a wide radius. That unique effect is where its explosivity lies and is why I hear it could be Mr. Torg's favourite gun. Criticals can be hard to land, but on Flak that's no problem at all, who with the help of Megaborg can get this gun doing some work, which you wouldn't really think could happen. On Moe's, those explosions are catastrophic, where each projectile has a chance to proc Torg cross promotion and grow three times larger. When that happens you'll probably be on your knees, but so will everyone else on screen. That however doesn't compare to the blast show on Zane with our friends Eraser and the Hustler class mod. Those three paired together cause explosions the likes of which have never been seen before. Its projectile pattern causes each Eraser round to fly out and back into the floor which causes absolute chaos wherever you take it. You'll want some form of immunity for that, either a rad build and a red suit or a shock build with the transformer. There's no doubt that it's often a gun that's out to get you, but if you can look past that, there's a powerful pistol lying in wait. We 
we end this countdown of the top 10 most secretly powerful weapons in Borderlands 3 with the Rebound, a COV assault rifle that comes in all the flavours and only drops from Psycho Reaver during the Psycho Creek DLC who you fight in Valhalla. The Rebound is a difficult gun to obtain but once you get it you'll never let it go. It doesn't fire a lead antimony alloy encased in a soft brass or copper plated soft steel jacket but saw blades with dynamite strapped to them. It fires 1 to 3 blades which consume 1 to 3 ammo and has a large magazine size. As its name suggests, those blades rebound off world surfaces but also travel through enemies. After travelling for a second they explode before returning to where they came from and exploding again. With it you can flood the screen with explosive saw blades which rip into enemies, slicing and dicing like a cake with no icing. I find the single projectile version to be best, allowing it to follow in the saw bar's footsteps and one shot bosses on an eraser zane. Mario can up those rebounds with indiscriminate, Moe's can load his dynamite with more TNT, and Flat can use a peak projectile version to ravage enemies with all it has to offer. Maybe it's time to break up with what you're currently using and rebound to the rebound. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned of the top 10 most secretly powerful weapons in Borderlands 3. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one.